So we're ready to put pen to paper and this is a process of developing a garden design plan. So what I've done is I've gone through uh, a garden that's um, a little bit fit, sort of fictitious. <laughs> so um, what we're going to do is um, look at this garden here. Uh, it was one that I sort of came up with in my, my own mind. It's from my old house and I had this idea that I was going to purchase, there's a chunk of land at the back, I was going to purchase this chunk of land and add it to this garden which is like about as big as a handkerchief. You can see it's tiny. It's about five meters by five meters for a tiny garden. These are all the existing features that exist. So when you do your site survey, everything that's going to be kept needs to be measured and plotted on this site survey. It doesn't have to be to scale. You just draw a rough idea of what you think its shape is. So on, I knew this was the bay window and this is the gate to get in. This is the kitchen door. This was my deck here. Everything was therefore measured. And this is what you will then do your scale drawing from. Now, how to do a conductor site survey, you will see in a separate video. We're talking about how this is developed. So the next thing to how this plan is developed is to create a scale outline of the entire site. And as you can see, it looked totally different to how it looked inside my brain, how I thought it was. But you can see that all of the main things are still there. This original decking, the bay window, the gate, the door, um, which my garden shed, they're all still there. And you can see how big this site, this big plot of land that I have the dream of one day buying and adding to create a beautiful garden. You will need to make quite a few copies of this one because this is what you are going to start designing on. You will then create concept designs if you've got a customer that you're doing it for. And again, doing these concept plans is doing it um, to scale or in proportion because you are using the scale outline plan that was there before so you see it's all still there but what we started to do so well we want a circular patio down here or on a tree there i thought this would be a great area of planting here and it's starting to play about with what types of shapes they want and this is where you start to form it on the basis of what we've spoken about previously or in videos that you might have watched yet that you need to watch on informal and formal gardens a blend of the two that you'll see on those videos and also within styles and themes so that whether it's an English cottage garden, a Mediterranean garden, a jungle, whatever's been created, these concept plans you start to create and you create it with a customer. Say I want a vegetable patch here, I want this, and start to plot where it's going to be. And also you'll need to know the orientation, which way is facing north. Where it gets the sun? I know that the north is facing uh, this way. So I know therefore that um, this, this doesn't get much sun. The sun's here in the morning by the evening the sun's here that's why i put a patio there and that's what you're working on with the customer wow they want to use the garden what they want to get out of it what kind of features they want in there roughly plot them on here and sort of start to have a bit play about with shapes and then you discuss that with the customer and what you've started to do is to create uh, a design um, that reflects uh, those styles and themes and shapes uh, within a garden and it's starting to take shape and form now and we can see um, what the garden's going to look like um, and this again you might want to share with the customer uh, just to make sure you've nailed down every feature but this now we know that we can create something that actually it, um, it's hop skip and a jump away from something that you could hand to a landscape contractor and they could build and construct the hard features of this garden and come in and plant it afterwards so it's, it's pretty much there it's still a little bit rough around the edges so we can see that um you know these lines here might have been a grid that this design was 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 used to create proportion from so they, they i designed it within a grid system uh basically took the measurement of um the, the, the backyard and reflected that here and designed everything to that and I did it at 45 degrees so that we could create this feeling that it was wide as well as long and um, but you can still see it's a bit rough around the edges um, and so the final plan gets developed into the this is your blueprint this is the negative this is what the contractor will be using uh, to measure up and to find out how much paving you needs to buy and to price it up to labor how much it's going to cost um it's also showing you the theme of the garden because you're starting to see that there are random um paving slabs that have been put down here so we can see this is sort of got like a country feel to it 
also we've got a slightly Japanese oriental theme with the decking and the way it's created a walkway that's through here and you're starting to see how um, the garden is going to be used and it's the shapes are much much more smoother so that the, the contractor or when you're plotting it out there's no excuse that's the shape that's how it's supposed to look um, it's showing you how many plants you need what types of plants you need and you might put a few labels on this one but you try and keep it as clear as possible so that there's little confusion and measuring and plotting out from it can be done to give more information it might be an idea to do another kind of final plan that you hand in with this one and that is a final colored labeled plan it's particularly for the customer if they're not pretty au fait with plans and garden design um, adding a bit of color and simple labels will help communicate your ideas and sell them to them this is the plan that I did as well on a computer so it could be easily uh, shared because it was a design that we did for a school it was a concept that we we're trying to put across a theme or a feel we put across that was based on the national curriculum and you can see that the path reflects a timeline that goes right from the prehistoric age um, the Jurassic a era over here all of the way through to the industrial revolution the plants and the landscaping reflects that and there's things for the kids to find in there we had to communicate this to a lot of people that weren't into gardening it wasn't just to the head uh, master or the, to the uh, senior management team because we wanted to involve, involve the whole school we created a simple color plan that could be shared easily put onto a whiteboard and could be seen by the children as well and the pupils that were at that school and used easily by the teachers so um, that's how you develop plans um, you don't necessarily have to do the last color one on computer you can do it with get your coloring cranes out get some watercolors out make a copy of that final negative and add your labels to it but make sure you have a copy and the customer has a copy uh, don't just give them all away um, because you never know when you're going to need them and especially if you're construct you're going to put in or construct in the garden if you're going to do the landscaping work you need to have copies of those and these are your plans as well if you're the designer you have made them um, so that's how you develop plans from the site survey to uh, an outline scale plan to concept drawings and plans to that final scale negative blueprint and color label plan that you hand over the, to the customer and that gets the garden built.